I thought I deserved it last year, to be quite frank. You know, I really wanted it. I thought I had done everything right. I don't know where I went wrong, to be honest. I have no idea where I went wrong. I never really... It's nothing I did last year. So it's going to come down again to, is there a spot open for me? And that's what it always was for me. Is there a spot for me? Here's where it all begins. You're three years old. You get to wear tights and a tutu, and you move your body in all sorts of new and funny ways. It's exciting. And then you're four and five and six, seven, eight. You're making new friends. You're learning a new language of plies and pirouettes. You're nine, 10, 11. It's something you now do after school maybe two or three afternoons every week. You're 12, 13, 14. Teachers are hard on you, but they push you, encourage you, urging you to refine your jumps, your arabesque, your port de bras. You're 15, 16, 17. Maybe you're in private schooling or homeschooled. And if you're Samantha Nagy Chow, you've already lived alone as a teenager in Seattle and San Francisco, all to give yourself the best ballet education. If you're Hannah Strauch or Daniel Powers, you're still so young, but yet you've only known life in ballet. If you're Chris Santos from Puerto Rico or Milena Garcia from Cuba, ballet is your ticket into the United States and an American way of life. If you're 26-year-old Justin Hughes, you're not about to let your age keep you from leaping for your dream. Only the most dedicated and talented make it this far into the pre-professional training program of the Cincinnati Ballet. By the time you're accepted into the Cincinnati Ballet's second company, you've put in untold thousands of hours. You're still in ballet class, but now it's every morning, followed by maybe eight hours of rehearsals, five, even six days a week. You're studying and rehearsing and even performing alongside professionals, but you're doing it all for no pay. Your parents have signed contracts with the company, agreeing to financially support you for your year in the second company. You're hoping that you've done enough this season to make artistic director Victoria Morgan and her associates fall in love with you and hire you into the principal company. It would be your first salary job in ballet and the launch of your career. If the Cincinnati Ballet doesn't offer you a contract, you face having to leave Cincinnati, line up auditions elsewhere, and compete once again with hundreds of others for your shot with another company. that our top priority was to find someone for the company and in the company there's sort of fewer and fewer shifts and changes I mean it's a short career it doesn't last forever and there's usually one shift out or maybe two so that's not a lot of open space for a new person and so now the auditions that we do are often to find the, the special CB2 dancers. I graduated probably at the most inconvenient time for an artist to try to get into the professional scene. I mean, the economy tanks in 2008, eight, nine, and I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to go. I thought that would be the wrong choice for me. Until last year, dancers could only belong to the second company for one season. It's a union rule. But then came Daniel Powers. He came to Cincinnati two years ago as a trainee and joined the second company last season. Victoria Morgan loved him. Heck, everyone who meets Daniel loves him. But there was no room in the company to hire him. But after a unanimous vote by dancers in the principal company, Cincinnati Ballet offered Daniel an unprecedented second year in the second company. I asked him why he wanted to invest another year without pay at the strong risk of again not receiving an offer to become an apprentice. You know, I felt like I had done everything possible to get hired, to be an apprentice, to be hired. And I felt like I deserved it. I deserved it a lot. I really wanted it. And I really, really, really wanted her to follow through. I mean, you invest so much time in a place and you feel so happy somewhere that you're not going to throw it away. I mean, like, I, might, I probably could have taken, you know, a smaller, lesser of a company position somewhere else, maybe. But 
The fact that they were willing to offer me another year speaks volumes, in my opinion. And, you know, I did have a lot of, uh, you know, conversations with my parents, conversations with friends and mentors of all different kinds from all different places. And, you know, I reasoned that it was the best move to stay here, to go for it again. Daniel's story is nothing like that of Justin Hughes. Unlike most at this level, Justin didn't start in ballet when he was young. In high school in Southern California, Justin was a championship level pole vaulter. Many who were serious about ballet skip college, but Justin went to a tiny Christian science college where he was more serious about physics. By the time ballet became his focus, he had no idea how far behind he was others his age. Doing the dance production at college, I was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Of course, I thought I was like the most amazing dancer to ever grace the planet. I went to Portland, Oregon Ballet Theater, and that was very eye-opening. I actually like went down a level. I thought that was kind of odd. I was expecting to be moving up into like a company kind of training position. I was down a level in the school, and I was kind of like, whoa, reality check. So uh, at that point, I kind of could see a path of things I had to work on. I could see sort of an end. I could see progress. Um, so there was sort of a light at the end of the tunnel. I was like, okay. Not long after Justin arrived in Cincinnati last summer, he grew close to Hannah Strauch. The two have been inseparable all season, but their histories in ballet are worlds apart. Hannah was only two years old when she started in ballet, and by 16, she was studying full-time with the Houston Ballet, one of the most vaunted and demanding training programs in the country. She arrived in Cincinnati as a trainee in 2012 and was invited into the second company this season. Directors praise her natural gifts, but injuries set her back last season and the beginning of this season, and her enthusiasm for ballet seemed to waver during her comeback. It was a rough beginning start to this year. I was kind of unmotivated, just coming back. They weren't putting me in anything because they wanted me to be good for reps later in the season. I know that I wasn't really focused. And then they would kind of be like, okay, well, I know you're not dancing, but you need to be really here. I had goals of being a trainee by the time I was 18, being in the second company by the time I was 19, so I've accomplished those two things. I didn't want this to be a lifetime pursuit. Like, I didn't want to be dancing through my 30s. I think because I put so much time and just didn't really get to experience so many things in my life as a kid and stuff because I've just been doing this all day, all the time and stuff. So I think I could do so much more and so many other things with my time. In some respects, Hannah couldn't have found a more appropriate roommate this year than Sammy Nagy Chow. Like Hannah, Sammy has studied ballet from her earliest years. She was just 13 and 14 when she spent two summers studying ballet in Seattle, and just 15 when her parents rented an apartment for her in downtown San Francisco, just blocks from the San Francisco Ballet's academy. Sammy spent three years full time at that academy, but like Hannah's experience with the Houston Ballet, Sammy left San Francisco with her spirit for ballet nearly broken. At that point in my life, it was kind of the end of the world. Um, it was. I felt so uh, like this was the only place I wanted to be and there's nothing else out there. It was just really, really hard to, to take um, all, all of the, you know, three years of intense, you know, me pouring my heart and soul into ballet and not really receiving um, the uh, re results that I wanted to. I mean, it's, it's so hard when you, you work your entire life for something and something you hope is going to happen doesn't. Different artistic directors have different ways of thinking. It's, you know, they're painting a picture. And I wasn't the color that he wanted. And, you know, I'm hoping that Victoria sees a color in me that she wants to use for her painting. Dancers from other countries have become vital to the lifeblood of Cincinnati Ballet. Between the principal and second companies, there are seven dancers from Cuba, two from China, and two, including Chris Santos, from Puerto Rico. Chris was 11 when he started in ballet, the only boy with a dozen girls his age at the National Ballet School. It was an hour's drive every day from his home outside of San Juan. He wasn't necessarily longing to come to America, but Chris saw ballet as his ticket out of poverty, and the United States is an easy transition for a Puerto Rican. Auditioning for the Cincinnati Ballet, he says, was one of the most important days of his life. Even back home, I've heard of Cincinnati being a good company, so I thought it would be a good opportunity for me. I've always been fortunate enough to get everything 
said yes from an audition, but it's still nerve-wracking wherever you audition for. I remember like sweating so much, like I've never spent that much in a class. It's hard because you feel like you have to impress everyone all the time, which is your job regardless, but it's more pressure in the second company because you know that you're always being watched because they have, they, they're gonna hire someone at the end of the season. As a dancer, regardless, you are always striving for perfection. So when you're in the second company, you are striving for to be God. Because <laughs> you, you can't just rely on talent. You have to show so much more just to prove that you deserve a place. Perhaps no dancer in the second company faces a steeper challenge than Milena Garcia. For one, she's tiny, and that's a liability for companies striving for sameness in their corps de ballet. But Milena's more immediate challenge is she speaks and understands little English. She and her boyfriend, Julio Concepcion, escaped Cuba together three years ago through Ecuador and found their way to Miami. The two auditioned for Victoria Morgan, who offered Julio a position in the corps and Milena a spot in the second company. Once a week after a full day of ballet, the two of them head to Cincinnati State to study English as a second language. Day to day, I am fighting to, to do well, to be a ballerina in this company. For me personally, it is a disadvantage that I don't know the language, but that's something that I am personally trying to overcome. I don't necessarily think it's a disadvantage in the grand scheme of things. Milena began to cry when I asked about her family in Cuba. She called being away from them the hardest thing she's ever done in her life. I came here to fight for the chance to help them and one day I hope to bring them here with me so we can all be together again. So this is my dream and that's why I keep going. Johanna Bernstein Wilt has been with Cincinnati Ballet for 33 years, the first 11 of them as a dancer, and since then on the artistic staff. I asked her how her career as a dancer would have fared today. I would not have made it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just amazing what these young dancers have to go through to get a job, uh, find a place to be. You know, companies are cutting back. Um, there's just not the funding. They're smaller. Work weeks are just not as long. You know, it's, it's a harder time. For, and there's so many kids out there trying to find jobs. It's a very, very hard profession that we have chosen. You know, there is nothing, I say this all the time, there is nothing fair about what we do. You know, it's all very subjective. It's a person's point of view. Johanna is with us in rehearsals every day. She knows it's the best out of everyone in the company. I mean, she's definitely the one evaluating every day. And then for the rare chance, Victoria's in a rehearsal. I mean, everyone's just like, Really, really, you can tell everyone just puts on a new face for her. It's kind of funny. Every dancer hopes for showcase roles, but the stakes are so much greater for those in the second company. Often, these slivers of time are the only opportunities to demonstrate how well they can adapt to a choreographer's direction and stage presence under the pressure of performance. And dancers are often left to their own to read between the lines when casting doesn't go their way. Like, I wasn't in Swan Lake. So for me, that was a huge blow to both my ego and my self-esteem. To come back as the senior CB2 and to not be in it, that was like, that was rough for me. This past holiday season, when Cincinnati Ballet staged its version of The Nutcracker, dancers in the second company had reason to be hopeful. Daniel and Chris shared time as the Nutcracker Prince. Justin Hughes got to perform in the physically demanding Russian dance. Sammy and Hannah danced among women in the core, and Milena rose to the occasion of comic relief in the cameo role of the grandmother. It's nice. It's nice to finally get to be like, okay, here I am. I'm proving to you that I can keep up with what's being thrown at me. Post Nutcracker is going to get really stressful and really nasty, and so I'm kind of just trying to be, enjoy this while this lasts before it all starts to unravel. 
Cincinnati Ballet sets the standard for community outreach and making the most of a marketing opportunity, and the boots on the ground, or rather slippers on the ground, are dancers in the second company. They appear on street corners and at street fairs, schools and senior centers, morning TV news programs and baseball pre-games. They hand out brochures, dance on floors made for anything but dance, and put a happy face on all things Cincinnati Ballet. In the world of professional ballet, this is part of paying your dues. It's hard cause in the sense that we just finished a full day of rehearsal, so you're tired and you gotta put your face, like really big face out there and do the dance and be professional about it. So in that sense it's hard, but it's always nice to see the outcome at the end. Ballet companies have their own culture and social order. Everyone tends to find the same place on the bar every morning for company class. Those wearing the title of principal or soloist tend to branch off from those in the corps de ballet. And because dancers in the second company pay their dues together and spend so much time with each other, they form fast and lasting friendships. About seven pairs of dancers in the Cincinnati Ballet are dating, and in one case are married. Every company in this country is incestuous. I mean, come on. You spend, you know, 40 hours a week with gorgeous people with lycra covering barely your whole body. Like, you're going to lead to some sexual tension and some interaction is going to play out one way or another. I mean, any office does already in the professional world, and you can imagine what we do all day. Justin and Hannah say one reason they work well as a couple is they're both low-key about it. Also, both of them seem prepared to let go of one another to some degree should job offers split them apart. It's been nice for me to just have certain like quality of life things like, uh, you know, a person I can hang out with and go do fun activities with and a nice place to come to and <laughs> like, I feel like we both kind of know, I don't know, we're probably going to go our separate ways or stay here together and, I don't know, either ways. I'm not really worried about where we end up because even if we are apart, I mean, it'll be a good year, so <laughs> it's been fun. Milena and Julio have more at stake. While Julio already has a salaried position with the company, his job is by no means secure. Below the top levels, everyone, even those in the corps de ballet, dance on nine-month contracts. You can be in your position for two, five, seven seasons or longer, only to hear on Judgment Day that it's in your best interest to audition elsewhere. Milena and Julio came to the United States together, and they were lucky to find homes together in Cincinnati, at least for this season. Nobody can say what's going to happen going forward. Of course, it would be ideal to be together and to never separate, and until that situation arises, we aren't going to talk about it or try to make any decisions. We'll confront it when we have to. I feel like for the first time in a very long time that I've done literally everything. Like, I don't know what, like, like, my roots are already so established here. Right. After three years, that I feel like leaving here after three years would be, would be a huge step in either a really great direction or it'd be over. Kind of like, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a good opportunity to, to, to leave on a high note kind of thing. There is really so much more to life than like that. If you're not like going to be happy just like trying, trying, trying and like feeling like you're like going this way, then you got to do what you got to do, you know? And I've been trying for so long. Yeah. If things don't pan out like at all, then I would just like, by Facebook, by Instagram, by everything, and just take a year to find what I really want to do because it's a lot of work. <laughs> We have three other kids that have all gone to, they're all in college or graduated from college and she's not going to college. It was a big deal, just as her thing, but she loves it. She's made a huge investment of her own time and we just wanted to be successful. I was real happy he found something he uh, loved and wanted to commit so much energy and, and soul to. So it was an easy thing for me to support. Especially for me, it was very challenging because you know, my biggest concern was her for her, uh, how is she going to make a living? and support herself. But I think that the one thing that Chris has really brought to our family and, and their homeschool education is it was really about allowing them to find their passion because if they could follow their passion they would learn everything that they needed around that. College is always there. She can always go back to it and that's 
what I always believe, that if you want to do it later, there's no rush, there's no deadline. This is what she needs to do right now, and because she's, it's her passion and she loves it so much. The, it's the process. It's really the process. You can't get too wrapped up in the results. You just gotta, you can't get wrapped up in what the outcome is, because you have no control over that. You can only control what you put in. You take from it whatever you, you make of it. I think there's a whole livelihood yeah. in ballet. There's, you know, teaching, coaching, yeah, there's coaching. all kinds of the support functions. So yeah. I don't think you ever have support to really functions. leave it. Yeah. You can make a living. You may not be living in a high rise. You won't be living well. <laughs> well <laughs> you could. But you'll be living. In late fall, every dancer in the company received a performance evaluation and met with company directors to talk about strengths and what they call corrections. For second company dancers, it's the only concrete feedback about where they stand and about their potential for eventually receiving an offer to join the company as an apprentice. I've always been told I have short legs, because I do, and um, <laughs> I, I mean, you just, you, you can do things to kind of um, make them look longer. They, work, they wanted me to work on not be shy on stage. I have trouble with tension sometimes. I get really tense in my neck. They said they would like to see more confidence. They told me that I do need to work on my arms. My, the arms are supposed to be very suave and fragile. I mean, the biggest thing I think is my height. It, I think is a huge detriment to myself. It's hard for a short person, no matter who you are. I'm 5'7", but that's, t I, mean, that's I mean, you know, if a girl's 5'5", five five, on point, she's 5'7". Ballet is all about appearance, you know? It's, it's all about how it looks. At the end, I was like, I can promise you I will try. I, I, I won't promise you I will get there, but I will try. In the end, evaluations only hint at how directors feel about a dancer's ultimate place in the company. It's really an evolving puzzle. Budgets might jump or dip enough from season to season to make the difference in adding or trimming one or two dancers. Earlier this decade, the company had as many as 36 dancers on the payroll. This year, there are 25. Some dancers find jobs with other companies, and injuries can shake everything up. In the end, Victoria Morgan and her artistic associates are a lot like general managers of a baseball team, measuring strengths and weaknesses and often recruiting dancers to fill specific holes, not necessarily because he or she is the best dancer available. It's not only about the individual, you know, it's often also about what is the team. I've got this budget and what, what is the place I need, you know? Is the place I need somebody who's going to like fit in with the look and the feel of the other members of the company or is it or do I need somebody who's going to stand out and who's going to you know maybe be a little taller and somebody who is uh, you know because you need to have you need to have some of that breadth as well so some of it is timing some of it is just uh, you know philosophy about uh, what the needs are and what the look of the company um, what you need it to be at that time and and what is the group you know what kind of energy is the group bringing to this organization and if you sense that somebody's you know sort of not really there and um, or or if you sense you know notes or corrections aren't being absorbed it, it becomes not only about the individual it becomes what is the the energy with the group everyone seemed to enjoy the run of Nutcracker but after the New Year's break, tension within the second company began to grow. Dancers were nervous about the casting for the world premiere of Camelot. It was the last chance to impress Victoria and her associates before they made decisions about next year's company. Last year, Cincinnati Ballet offered an apprentice contract to just one dancer in the second company. Most of this season's group had realistic but discouraged outlooks, shaped by simple math. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of gonna gauge it off of that really and that's the lead up to Camelot. If I don't get offered then I'm gonna start kind of just thinking that it's probably not gonna happen. That's kind of how I'm gonna gauge it for myself just because I think that's you know for someone who's been here for <laughs> three years now it's kind of like they don't if they're not willing to offer it to me then it's probably not gonna be me. It's not really frustrating to me because I already know the way the ballet world works they could take anyone so I'm just kind of like I'm not expecting to stay here at all. I mean I would be kind of surprised.
after Camelot at the end of February, Victoria Morgan and her associates made tough and surprising decisions about members of the second company and who they invited to become apprentices next season. I just felt like it was finally everything that I had been working my whole life for coming together. Nothing is forever. It's really like I could, I could be here for a long time. I could be here for one more year. I know I'm not going to be a superstar of Paris Opera Ballet, and probably not going to be a superstar of Cincinnati Ballet, but that's okay with me. Like, I know that I'm a good dancer and I can give certain things. Um, so being realistic with myself, it was, it was good to see that, that I could get a job and I could dance for a living and I could dance amazing things. And that, it's in itself, just that simple, like, you know, I can make it in the way that I want to make it. She's just, she's beautiful. She's got a beautiful facility, you know. She's got beautiful feet and legs and, you know, I think there's huge potential. You need to sort of look at, do they come to rehearsal on a daily basis and are they fully present? And do I know that their mother and father had a fight or do I know that, you know, she had a bad night or do I, I don't know any of that. When she walks through that door, she's 100% committed Cincinnati Ballet Dancer. I just burst into the biggest ugly cry ever. I was just like, could not hold any emotion in whatsoever. I mean, I just like broke down. I was like, ah, like, you know, I was just, I mean, I was overwhelmed. I couldn't hold it together. And, and then as more and more of the company members came out and found out that I had gotten the job, they were equally as moved and they were so happy for me. And because they've been, I mean, they've been on this odyssey with me for the past few years. It was so, so gratifying to know that all of this, you know, hardship and having to come back for another year was, was worth it. In a way, it's like, even you're a weekly salary dancer. That is the dream. That's the dream. You dream it, it's happening, it's great. Now you have to keep going. You know, it doesn't, it by no means ends. And if anything, the expectations are higher of you. There's that thing about somebody who is absolutely joyous and thrilled to be in the room just getting that energy just constantly coming at you. When I was working on King Arthur's Camelot, I had a chance to, I mean, just spend hours and hours with him. I mean, it didn't matter what role Danny stepped into, he, he somehow could do it. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. All these options of like go through your mind like quitting and doing something else, going to college. You love it, but at the end of the day you have to do something to support yourself. It's nice to earn respect. You worked the entire year and you earned it and everyone sees why they picked you. He can be a pretty impressive young man. You know, when you watch him, he's got a great extension, he's got a good jump, he's got a solid pirouette. He's, he's got a lot of what you need. We've had a couple of conversations about this thing, like put some light in your, in your eyes, you know, like put some fire in your, in, your, in your presentation. I see it more when he gets on stage. Neither Justin nor Hannah were offered salaried positions in Cincinnati next season. Hannah asked Sammy for help to create an audition tape, which she planned to send to companies all over the country. She and Justin are now auditioning every chance they get, together and separately, as their budgets allow. I met up with Hannah and Justin as they were about to leave for an audition with Texas Ballet Theater in Fort Worth. Chris was babysitting Hannah's dog, Jake. And they just give a regular class. But it's like groups of people that will go across center. They'll say numbers, you know, 1 through 10 come up. And so it's a lot of standing. 11 through 20. And, and auditions. Uh, they have a few people at the front with the like a table, panel. and there's like five or so, you know, people up there just writing notes. Sometimes and, people walk around and like, will yeah. like cross they'll names be like, and They'll be like, <laughs> they'll be like, <laughs> they're, they're like, they're just talking, just like pointing at you as you're like standing and there. And like, they'll be like, And you're like, that was probably me, <laughs> okay. I think every relationship can like either expand or you should be, I don't think you should be so set on how long a relationship should be, you know? Especially in our profession when you're just everywhere and you never know where, like I don't know where I'm gonna be in like four months, so. It hasn't really changed any of my outlooks. I still wanna try and get work, definitely. And um, if I don't, I guess it'll just, That'll just be it. 
Melena is in the toughest position of all. Julio has accepted the company's offer to return to the corps de ballet next season, leaving Melena to audition elsewhere, alone, if she wants to continue pursuing a career in American ballet. I think it's the, the role of a ballerina to always strive to, to succeed and to, to get to the next level. And for me, it was a, a wonderful, unforgettable experience. I learned so much. I worked with so many wonderful people. And I don't regret doing this at all, but it's not something that I would do again. The three most important things in my life are my family, my health, and then my career. And Julio, for me, is part of my family. Obviously, we're not happy that right now we don't have a, a place together, but we're, we're not giving up hope right now. Julio has this job. It, it's part of the job. You don't always know if you'll be able to be in, in the same place, but it, it happens, and we're, we'll make it work somehow.